The details element might be the one and only interactive element in HTML that doesn't need JavaScript out of the box. Add in the summary element and we get pretty nice accordion-like disclosures. We can style them up and we can progressively enhance them with animation. So getting right into it, we have the details element, just like this. And as soon as I expand that, I get exactly that. I can click on this, the arrow changes directions. It works right away. I don't even have to add any content, but not having content seems silly. So let's go and add some. Right here, I'm gonna add two paragraphs and expand that out. Now that doesn't show up because it's not open. If I click this again, our paragraphs are there, okay? We can change the details name by adding in a summary, just like I said at the beginning. And maybe we say this is question, whoops, question one. And all of a sudden we have an FAQ, right? It's got the question and the answer in theory, okay? Now, if this is looking a little bit familiar, it should, okay? If you've ever used field set before, it is the same sort of markup, but the names have changed. So we have field set and this would be legend just like this. And everything else just works out. All I've done is change those tag names and we have a completely different layout, okay? Now field set is usually only used for uh, inputs for forms to group different inputs into a, a thing, but it's kind of the same markup, okay? Backing out, I'm gonna bring back that summary, I'm gonna bring back that details, and we are back to normal. Now, before we go any further, I like, and I strongly recommend you to do this as well, I like to put all the contents into their own container. And the reason that I do this is because it's easier to style the spacing, okay? That's the only reason to do this. If you wanna leave these paragraphs in their own place and style each individual piece, by all means, you totally could do that. But I'm gonna add that div, those divs, and then I'm gonna go and copy this, paste it down, paste it down. This is now question three, and question two is up here, okay? Open this up so that we can see it all. So now we have these completely independent uh, disclosure widgets, right? We have a, a bit of an FAQ going on here and we can open and close these and it all just works. We haven't added any JavaScript yet, okay? So the browser is giving all of this functionality to us for free, which is really, really cool. From here, we can also control it ourselves. So if I wanted to, I could set this to open, add an attribute of open, and you'll notice that the other two close because the whole page resets, but this is question one is now open by default. It doesn't stop me from closing it, but it is open at the start, okay? So we're setting that initial state to open. Down here, we can start to add some styles, okay? So let's get into that. Let's start with the body. Background color is going to be silver. And now we are actually going to do the details and the background color of that is going to be white. And it's not showing up. Oh, because I misspelled details. There it is. You'll notice that there's some weird spacing going on here. If I open this, I get spacing. If I close it, it gets rid of that spacing. And that's because the spacing is being done by the paragraph, okay? Paragraphs have some default margins and those margins can push through the, the boundaries of their containers. I don't really like that uh, and I, I don't think anyone should have to deal with that because it's weird for one. And for the other, these paragraphs are inside of a div inside of a uh, details uh, element, which doesn't really work for me. So one thing that I like to do when I see that happening is either one, I could take care of the margins, right? If I had a detailed style sheet from a designer, I would do that. For now, I'm just going to fake it. And the way that I'm gonna do that is with a little trick called border. Now, anytime that you add border, it kind of 
forces that to work better. We don't need any sort of color in here. In fact, we can just use transparent. And all of a sudden, everything is working, okay? I'm gonna add my own border of one rem, just like this. And that way, it all looks really good. And then right above this border, I'm gonna add border radius of one rem as well, okay? So, there it is. Now we need to take care of that internal spacing. The internal spacing, we could put here, just like this. I strongly discourage you from doing this though, and here's why. If I go here and I start using my keyboard, you can see the, the focus ring, and the focus ring does not extend to the edge. So if I click on the edge, nothing happens. I have to click somewhere in the middle of this text to open and close it. And I'm pretty sure that users would expect the whole box to be the target, to be clickable. We can do that right here, summary. Just go grab that padding, bring it right back down. And now when we tab through here, we get the whole box. I can click this little tiny corner over here and it works. We should also go add, go add spacing to the paragraphs, but remember that the paragraphs have their own margins. So maybe we just add left and right to the div. And that looks like this. We go and grab that div. Normally I would probably add a class to this in professional work. Here we're just playing around a little bit, so I'm gonna keep playing around a little bit, okay? There's zero, there's one rem, and everything is looking just really, really nice, okay? We didn't have to do any sort of JavaScript. Remember, the browser is giving this to us for free. We did add some styles just to space it out, but now it looks really, really nice. We could add a heading to this that says FAQ or frequently asked questions or here's some interesting stuff and we would be done in theory. Now that doesn't make for a very interesting video, so I'm gonna keep going with these markers. And whereas the details in summary kind of look like uh, field set and legend, the marker itself is based off of lists. So it's kind of a weird thing where if we go in here and set list style to none, in every other browser except mine, it would cause these to go away. Why is it not going away? Because this is Safari and Safari does things a little bit different for these, these markers. Instead, I'm gonna grab this, bring it right up here, and I'm gonna add a pseudo element called WebKit uh, details, whoops, details marker and set it to display none, which immediately gets rid of all that stuff. So Safari is playing a little bit of a game here and then list style right there and we can keep going, okay? We're gonna reintroduce our own as an after the content is going to be the plus sign. So right here, plus sign, there it is. We actually want it all the way over here. So let's go and do that really fast. Underneath summary, we can do display flex and justify content space between, which drives it all the way over. And now we have this, okay? It's not quite done. I'd really like it to be an X when it's open. So let's keep going here, whoops. And again, uh, we have that after, but now we, we have this thing where we need to know when it's open. Well, we actually have that, right? If we go all the way to the top, we have this open attribute. And even though we didn't add it to our other ones, when we click open and close on these, it gets added for us. So if we go back to our code, right behind this and go open. And then we transform this, transform, rotate, uh, one, one eighth of the circle, I think, 1.125 turn like this, it should update and we get a plus and an X. Could be a little bit bigger. I'm not gonna worry about that, but you can at least see it happening. 
It would be really cool if it animated. Let's go and do that. So back up here, transform, rotate, and I'm gonna make this one turn. You could also do zero, perfectly fine. Uh, I want it to spin a little bit more just so that we see stuff. So I'm gonna make it one turn. Uh, transition is going to be the transform for 0.3 seconds, okay? And now, in every other browser but mine, if we were to click this, it would kind of spin around and stop as an X and then spin back around and stop as a plus. Why isn't it working? Well, because Safari has a bug and that bug is around this attribute. So when we, when we attach this attribute open to details, it automatically clobbers our transitions. Uh, very well-known bug. You can go and search it online. Uh, it has not been solved yet, but there are workarounds. And the workarounds are JavaScript. So with JavaScript, we need to grab all of these details. We can do that by going details else, elements, equals document.querySelectorAll. and details, okay? You might wanna use a class selector or something else. Uh, you do you, okay? Down here, details else for each, and we're gonna use that details and do something, okay? Now, what do we do? Well, we have details, and on details, there's an event. So we can go uh, add event listener, the event is toggle. And toggle uh, means when it opens and when it closes, it will dispatch this event. So we're toggling it open, we're toggling it closed, whatever it is, it just works, okay? Uh, inside of here, we're gonna get the, the event itself because we need that and carry on, okay? So the event is here now. What are we gonna do? We're gonna attach a class. Because even though open doesn't work, a class actually does, okay? So toggle, don't confuse these two toggles. This is the event, this is toggling a class, and we're going to call it details, whoops, open, details-open. Now, one thing that I always forget about the class list toggle is that it gets a second argument. And that second argument will force it. So depending on whether it's true or false, it will decide whether this should be set or not. That's on e target open. Because remember that target is our details. Okay, the, the toggle happens on the details. So that's our target. And it also has that open uh, attribute, which we can get directly. So based on all of that, we should be able to open and close this, and nothing happens. Why? Because we haven't used this class yet. So that's my fault. Right here, details dot, uh, details open, summary after. And once that all updates, we should get, it spins when we close. Can you see that? It spins when we close, but not when we open. And why? Well, because details open only exists when we are open. So in theory, it would only trigger because of that. Right here, we still have this details open with the attribute, which is causing the, uh, the open to not work. So when it closes, it has details open, which is causing the animation. And the other way around is failing. Now we can fix that. That's easy enough. We can just add a new class to everything. So right here, we're gonna add this. We're gonna set it to just details like this. So for every details, we're doing a progressive enhancement where we add this details class. And now we can go not details. And once that all sets up, 
it opens when it uh, it animates when it opens and it animates when it closes. From here, I want to also animate the uh, the paragraphs. So when we do this, you'll notice that it just collapses and opens and collapses and opens. Most of these, uh, when you get them from other places, they slide open, they slide closed, they looks really slick. We can totally do that. But before we do that, we need to understand how this component works. Because if we don't get that, everything that comes after will not work. Okay. So right here, if we inspect this, we're going to see this details, which is great. It has the details class, details open, exactly as we would expect. There's the open attribute. Make it a pinch bigger just so that we can see it. And now inside of here, you're going to see there's our summary, right? And right below it is the div with the content. But right above both of them is this shadow content. And so what details is doing is it's acting a lot like a web component where it's adding its own shadow DOM. And so if we click in here, we're going to see a slot with summary slot and a default slot and unnamed slot. So summary goes into summary slot. Everything else goes into the default slot. And that's how this works. And now watch this slot as I click on summary. It just went away. It just vanished completely. If I click it back, it comes back. I click it away, it goes away. Click it to come back, it comes back. And so what details is doing is it is dynamically adding and removing this slot which contains our div content. And that is a big problem because if it rips this out, how can we ever animate it, right? We need to take control. And unfortunately, we won't be able to take control with toggle because here's how it goes. Summary gets a click event. That's what allows us to open and close. When we click on that, it updates details with open, the, the open attribute. And then after all that is done, it dispatches the toggle. So toggle comes way too late for us. We want to stop it right at the source, right at the click, which means that we want to add a click event to this summary. Okay. So all the way at the top, we're going to grab summary just like this. It's going to be details query selector. And it's going to be summary. Okay. We're also going to do the contents because we're going to do that in a second. This is going to be details. Uh, I always forget this one. It is last element child. Okay. Now we could have done query selector summary uh, plus star, which would have got that. But last element child just grabs whatever that, that last div is and makes it work. And so we have these. We aren't going to use this details. So let's get rid of that really fast. And right down here, we're going to add a new event. Add event listener, just like this. Again, it's going to be click. And on here, we're going to use that event again. But only for the first part, it's going to be event prevent default just like this. And what that will do is it will stop us from being able to click into these. So they no longer work. But now we can start to do stuff. Okay. And what we're going to do is we are going to get the height of this container. And when it's closed, we're going to shrink it down to zero. And then when it's open, we're going to expand it to the height. And the, the weird thing here is that with CSS, we can't really animate height because we, we can't animate percentage heights, right? It just doesn't work. So we need to actually get that height ahead of time. And remember, when it's closed, uh, which I can't close anymore, but when, when it's closed, these paragraphs don't exist in the DOM. They don't exist anywhere, right? We need to open it, get that measurement, do whatever we need to do, and then if we need to close it, we close it. Okay. 
If that's confusing, hopefully the example will make it easy. So again, we start out by opening it. So details open. Open is a getter, right? We can, we can get that in places. Where did we get it? Uh, right here. It's also a setter. So we can just change this to true, which forces it to be open. And now if I click this, I can open it, but I cannot close it, okay? From here, I'm going to get a few items, okay? Uh, so on the content, I'm going to figure out the height and set it as a custom property, okay? So set property like this. That custom property is going to be expanded. And inside of here, I'm going to get something in pixels. It's going to be content scroll height, okay? Which gives me exactly what I need to, to figure all this out. Uh, and it all just sort of works, okay? So content scroll height, I'm gonna set that on property as soon as opening and closing works. In fact, I should be able to do that right now. And if I go and grab this, you'll see that this div has expanded 88, which is exactly what I would expect, okay? Uh, going further, we're going to set this toggle. So we can just go and grab that right here. We don't really need a, uh, a force on this anymore, so we can get rid of that part. And then after all is said and done, details open is going to be this. So it's, it's going to be all of, well, part of this right here. Just copy and pasting. Uh, instead, it's going to be contains details open. We can get rid of everything else. And so what we've done is we've set up this situation where we open it, we set the height, then we toggle the class based on whether it has to be or not. And then if that class is on, then this will be true, which means that open will be set to true. Otherwise, it'll be false, which sets open to false and closes it, okay? And everything should be back working. It absolutely is. Now we need to go and add this to, the, to our CSS, okay? So back to the CSS, right about here somewhere. We can get this done. It will be details dot details because we wanna do progressive enhancement. We're gonna use the class here, okay? We, we've set it inside of JavaScript so we can keep doing that. And then we get that div, okay, right here. Now, overflow should be hidden, height should be zero, and transition, transition of height should be 0.3 seconds, okay? We do the exact same thing, so we can copy that, paste it down, and get rid of all of this, actually. So height one more time it's going to be dash dash expanded, okay? Spell it right. Now we, we do need that class. Remember it's details open. So details open. And if we've done this, it will open and close. Of course it won't close because, because what? Well, remember, if this is false, it's ripping it out and we've, we've done that immediately, okay? We, we haven't set any delay on this. So what I would recommend is just for this, set timeout, um, not of zero, there we go. Do it right, fingers are no longer working. And that's going to be 300 milliseconds, which is what we set up here. We bring this up and in, and now everything, everything opens and closes looking really slick. There is a small problem here where uh, the first one should have been open, right? We, we haven't done that yet. So we can do that really fast. We actually just use these exact same two things. And right below this, uh, this class list add, we add an if statement. We go, is it open? And if it is, then we set those up, okay? Uh, this is toggle, we could technically use add it's the exact same thing. 
but now it is back to normal and everything is working. It, look, it works really, really cool, I think, okay? The animation over here is playing. It slides open and closed. Yeah, it looks really slick. I wanna take it one step further. To finish out this video, I want to move some of that code into its own class. And there's a very good reason for that. So let's start out by creating that class. We're gonna call it details controller. You can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna do this. We need a constructor. That's gonna get past the element. And inside of the element, we're gonna grab a few things, okay? So right here, um, summary and uh, content. That's gonna be this summary content so that we can grab that. And then we, we need to build out our init function, okay? I'm gonna set it as a private function. There's a reason for that that I will show very, very soon. But for now, we can grab everything else in here, just copy and paste it right up and in, clean it up just a little with the format. Brilliant, okay? At this point, we need to update our this statements, so I've actually missed one here where it should be this dot details. I would have missed that and it would have complained. So summary, details, content, details, over here, content, details, 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 content, content, details. Go to the start of that, this dot, hopefully that works, and then we run it. So this dot, init and if we've done that nothing really changes and we aren't getting any errors in here but we can go and comment all of this out okay and right here we just go new details controller of details whoops spell it right hopefully hopefully everything works it doesn't what did i miss Details, uh, this details query selector, where is it? Oh, you know what? It's because I haven't set that. So this details equals L, and now everything still works, okay? But here's the key, we can keep cleaning this up. So I'm gonna add a few things below my init. For one, I'm gonna add open, spell it right, there we go. And below that, I'm gonna add a close, just like this. And below that, I'm gonna add one more, another private function called toggle, right here, okay? And inside of toggle, I'm gonna to receive open, but now I can go and grab everything below the prevent default, copy that, and paste it right in, we're gonna to have to change just a, a couple things here. So this still stays true. This still stays as expanded. But right here, we want this toggle to be forced based on open, okay? And all of this, I still need this contained. So copy it to the, the pasteboard, but change it to open. So now we have toggle. Way up here, I get rid of all of this, which is gonna break things for a second, but if this details class list contains, right? Whoops, jumping around my arrow keys, doing, their, doing the wrong thing. Then this dot close, okay? Else this dot open. Now here's the problem, we haven't actually set those up, so let's do that really fast. This dot toggle, and we're gonna set it to true, okay? And right here, this dot toggle, set it to false, okay? So we have a few private functions, or a few private methods, and a few public methods, and everything still works. But what have we done here? Well, the key is in taking a look. And for that, we need to change this a little bit. 
So whereas we were getting a for each, I'm going to grab this as details dot, whoops, details toggles, just like this, make it equal to details elements uh, map. Now for that, I need to expand it just like this and return our controller. Okay. So at this point, nothing should really change. We can still open and close it going all the way to the bottom. Uh, if I was doing professional code, I would have already deleted that. That is as an example. So right here, um, details toggles. Okay. Did I spell that right? I did. Yes. Okay. So details toggles. If I go back to my code or to my developer tools, I have an array which has three details controllers. Okay. Not a lot in here, but if you look under prototype, you'll see close and open. Those are the only two things that I left open. So people shouldn't be able to use toggle, shouldn't be able to use the init function. That's all internal, but opening up close and open gives us a bit of a superpower. And for that, I'm going to go way up here, all the way to the top, add a new div inside of there. I'm going to add a button of class um, open BTN, whoops, open dash BTN like this, and it's going to be open all. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same button uh, uh, close dash BTN and close all. So now we have two buttons, one for open, one for close. I can grab those, whoops, not in here, down in the JavaScript. So right here, const open button, just like this, equals document dot query selector. Spell it right, and dot open dash btn. Copy this. Paste it really fast. Do the close, close. Excellent. Okay. Now, open button. It's going to be a long one, but stick with me. So add event listener. Listener like this. Uh, we get we grab the click on that. And, whoops. Down in here, now that we have the, the click, we want to do a for each on, on these toggles. So dot for each, uh, let's just go details again. doesn't really matter. Details dot open. Okay. Copy it one more time really fast. Whoops. That's weird. Jumping around, change it to close button and close. So if we've done this, what we've done is using a class, we've opened it up so that we can trigger this from outside. And now we can open all and close all. And it is not working. Why is it not working? There's an error. It says close button. Uh, I, I did something. What did I do? Do, do, do? Right here by the looks of it. And right here. That's so weird. I didn't, I didn't close those out. One more time. Open, close, open, close. I can open some of these, close them all, open all, close one. It all just works. So to bring it home, details and summary. This has been a very, very long one, but details and summary, you can set this open property directly on it. Okay. Open attribute directly on the details. If you don't add summary, it will add one for you, which is kind of useless. So details and summary go together. Uh, you add whatever else, uh, whatever other content you want, and the system just figures it out. It gives you all of that functionality for free. We can also style that up. So we went and added some styles to change the marker and animate it. Uh, we also added some, some progressive enhancements with our animations. 
okay? Because, because of the way that this works with the, the Shadow Dome, we can't just get that directly, okay? We can't animate on that directly. So we kind of had to go about it a funny way. And the ways that we did that were, we started with this toggle, okay? Toggle is great if you're just doing uh, basic events. But once you get past something more advanced, you really want to be capturing the, the summary click, okay? And from there, you might need to set some defaults or, or capture some other things, but you can pretty much do whatever you need to do at this point. To finish it, we added it to a class, which kind of made it a little bit longer, but also gives us just a ton of flexibility. Okay, and there's still some cleanup in here to be done, but it all just kind of works. And now that we, we have this class, we expose open and close to the world so that we can do global buttons. Details and summary. The system gives it to us for free, and all we have to do is use it. We did have to add a little bit extra if we wanted to get animations in here, but everything else was already available to us. So why not use it? That's it for this. This, is, this has been just a really, really long one. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. If you have other ways or, or you can think of other ways of, of using detail summary, please hit me up in the comments or uh, let me know and I will see you in the next one.